what's going on youtube welcome back to another week of the embracing organic show the show where we try and get you to be a little bit more organic in your daily practices so this week we have a special guest he's no stranger to the cannabis industry i just like many of you have met him through the dude grows show <clears throat> either through the countless hours of behind the scenes time you spent improving the show or just being that nice guy that he is at events such as the DGC Cup or the Indo Expo. <clears throat> but don't let this soft teddy bear appearance fool you. This guy has overcome a lot of things in his life and he's got plenty of scars to show you that he is truly a warrior and it doesn't end there. He's also responsible for bringing you all the platform known as Cannabuzz. And if you haven't checked out Cannabuzz yet, I highly suggest you do. With all of that being said, welcome to the show, JR Token. What's going on, buddy? How are you this week? Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm honored to be on the show. And I'm happy to kick it with some bros, man. It's been a while. I've uh, been doing the quarantine thing because uh, my health is compromised. So I've been spending a lot of time with the wife and the daughter and the granddaughter. So I'm ready to hang with some bros. Hell yeah, man. So uh, you're coming to us direct and live from under the uh, stairs, right? A little Harry yeah. Potter action over there, huh? Harry Potter style. Yeah. Under you the got, stairs. You got your little smoke room. That's cool, man. It's Hell it's yeah, nice. Every get... every man deserves a man cave. Thank you. Mine's just exceptionally small. <laughs> hey, dude, you take, you take what you can get, man. You take what you can get. That's right. That's right. Hell yeah. Truly. So what's going on in your life, JR? What are you smoking on? How are things? Yeah, but without right now, further ado. Yeah, dab yeah. time. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, right now I'm smoking on some Dark Hollow from Irie Genetics, or I suggest Dark Hollow. Uh, I just got done doing a run. I did four different varieties. Uh, looking for some new stuff. I've been growing Cookie Crumble for quite a while um, and just got ready to move on. So I... Envy Genetics, I did their Drip, uh, Caps Lock by Two-Tone Willie. I did the Dark Hollow um, by Rasta Jeff, Irie. And then I also did the Burnt Toast from Raw Genetics. And so it was all new stuff. Uh, everything kind of clicked along the same lines. I think that the Dark Hollow finished up sooner than everything else in the room. Uh, everything else needed to go the 10 weeks. I don't think Dark Hollow needed to go that long. Um, nice. It's a very good producer. Scroggs really well. Uh, has good lateral branching. Um, I think of my only complaint of the other varieties, or especially the drip and the burnt toast, was they're very stretchy and not bushy. You know what I mean? So, you know, you got to get on them early and get them shaped up how you want them. But yeah, just been doing the garden. And that's the nice thing about the quarantine thing is I've been spending a lot of time in the garden. You get to spend extra time giving them ladies the love and care that they deserve. Uh, I like it. That's right. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Do you have any awesome new grow lights in your garden? Yeah, I just got a new cannon. Uh, Black Cells. Keith hooked me up with the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, love it. I'm stoked. Um, I needed that. It was one piece of the puzzle that I was kind of missing. And uh, it really, uh, I have half LED, half uh, HBS. And so um, now I'm, I feel like my rooms are complete and I can just, you know, do my thing. Where before I was struggling, I would have, I would have things staged out in the bedroom and I would have mothers. So I had too many plants and not enough light space. Uh, so I developed a whole row of LED and uh, the Canon was the missing link. Well, you were just talking about stretch and I was just thinking about how um, under a different spectrum of light, it could be like, you know, a completely different story. It just depends. I would agree with that. I would agree yeah. with that. I noticed cool. that um, Uncle Jim has all Canons in his flower room. And his node spacing is much shorter uh, than my node spacing. I would say he also gets uh, more vegetation than I do. His plants are usually a little more bushier and leafier. Uh, but he's been rocking those cannons now for a while. And uh, he's just got a little four by seven. And he's 
he's banging it out. He's doing a really good job. I'm glad they're still working, man. Those are that he he was my first customer. For anybody who doesn't know, JR Token got me my first sale and uh, got the ball rolling for me at Black Sale Market. So to uh, to be able to finally send him a light, you know, because I fucking promised him one. I was like, you got me my first sale. I'm gonna give you a light one of these days. Uh, so that was really nice, man. Um, Thanks, appreciate it, with it. Yep. Really appreciate it. All right. So how did everybody like the new intro this week? Yeah. Love it. it. So we got to thank Tanasi Gardens for that one. He worked hard on that. Thanks, Tanasi. <laughs> Hell yeah. So we also got Pedro joining us this week. Pedro's grow room. What's going on, buddy? How are you doing? Over there? Don't talk about your account getting unbelievable. I'm, t- I'm doing great, man. How the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. Just chilling, working. Uh, busy time of year, pre-flower, uh, outdoor. Super fucking busy. I don't envy you outdoor guys. I'm watching you all die on social media. You guys are, every couple hours I see you just with a pitcher of water, pour one over your mouth, one over your head. Oh, it's hot out here. <laughs> Not jealous of you outdoor guys at all. Yeah, it does make you a little crazy, I guess, dealing with that shit, right? It's worth it. For sure. Agreed. We had a slow season up here in the Northwest. Uh, we kind of was doing the rain, then sun, then a bunch of rain, a bunch of sun. Uh, but over the last couple of weeks, it's just opened up and it's been nothing but hot here. So the outdoor guys are starting to get a little bit of a break as things are starting to transition in the flower. But uh, it's it was a really slow and wet June, really slow and wet June in the beginning of July. I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Man, right off the bat, Jeff with the jokes. It's way too easy, dude. Just I like know. slow and wet June. <laughs> so what's going on with the rest of the panel members? How's everybody feeling this week? Since we're talking to Jeff, how are you doing? I'm great, bro. I, uh, I'm packing up more dark hollow seeds because you people keep buying them like savages. So thank you. Uh, I've got to get more of them together because I can't keep up with the orders. So when you see me looking down, counting and looking awkward, I'm over here packing up dark hollow. Uh, right now in the garden, I have got some Jack the Ripper crosses that are almost complete. I've probably got 10 to 15, maybe 20 days uh, before the seeds are done. They are under my Canon LEDs. The plants look happy. The leaves look super thick. I was saying on another show that usually my leaves are about a piece of paper thick, you know, as an estimate. Now they're like two pieces of paper thick, getting definitely thicker leaves. Uh, I've noticed that my plants indicate they have gotten their DLI more quickly under the LEDs. They show me more indications that they have had their light. So when your plants are growing and they start drooping during the day and you're like, is there something wrong? No, they've just had enough light. Under the LEDs, they show me that way more early. Uh, The signs are much more obvious. Instead of just a little droop, they're like, oh dude, I'm sleepy. And they just droop right on down. It's pretty awesome. So loving that, those seeds will be done. I think that's an important point to bring out to people, especially to new growers, because You'll go in your room an hour before the lights are out and you'll think, holy fuck, what the hell happened, man? Everything's like, you know, and a lot of times, like you said, they've got their integral of DLI and they're ready to go to sleep. Yeah. And I'm seeing it a lot stronger, more obvious with the uh, LED lights. So that's something that I've definitely noticed uh, here toward the end of flower. And the Jack the Ripper seeds I talk about all the time, they'll be done in like two weeks. I'm going to test them first. So when you guys are already reaching out for testers, be patient. You'll get them. Don't worry. But just let me test them first. Go ahead, Keith. Jeff, the the DLI thing is something that I've been very curious about because I noticed that droop. And uh, I know like I can turn my lights up a little bit and it happens earlier and I can yep. turn them down a little bit and it happens later. So the experiment I want to do is to turn the lights down until the point where they start to droop maybe just like 30 minutes before lights out. And then the hard thing to measure, I guess, is your fucking growth rate, unless it's like, you know, would you be able to tell necessarily like if, if you did a side by side, that they would, you need a side by side. I would do a side by side. Yeah. Do uh, divide your tent or do two five by fives and do one where you're paying attention and watch when they go and then do one just on a schedule that you go by that schedule. And that's how I would, that's how I would do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, 
the only thing you're really saving is some electricity and some HVAC if you're able to uh, turn down the light intensity and still get the same growth rates. You know, if the plants are really clocking out when they droop like that, uh, I would just, it'd be a fucking awesome science, science experiment. Right. I agree. And then we could dial it in perfectly, give them the exact minute of light that they need and not waste a penny. I know that it also kind of depends. It's probably uh, variety dependent as well. Like I think some varieties are more likely to get their fill and go to sleep faster than others. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah. Based on their genetics uh, from their location on the equator. Guaranteed. Beautiful. Oh yeah. So Mr. Fumador, what you got going on over there, buddy? How are you this week? Uh, I was just about to roll a joint. Uh, let me think here. Actually, it's getting pretty close to uh, snippy, snippy time, which is kind of one of mm. those like bittersweet times. It's like getting it circumcised. Amazing and looks amazing. <laughs> Definitely, that's the that's the one. Twice, in fact. Uh, but uh, <laughs> everyone else knows what I'm talking about. Uh, it's just kind of like a, a a bittersweet time. I'm always like, oh, you know, my old friends are leaving, but at the same time, it's time for the new friends that you know. Some of them I haven't even really met yet. You know, I know. The, the nice thing about growing is that you always kind of know that there's going to be a new friend that you haven't even seen yet. So it's like, it's just a real excitement to plant new seeds at the same time as it's excitement to like chop old stuff down. So anyway, I'm in that time right now and I don't know, chilling, trying to see what's going to happen with the, uh, the world, the country and everything else, but uh, let's keep it uh, goofy and light. And I, I'm going to smoke some om ominous pine right about now. I realize that probably that's a Strange word to use, ominous, but whatever. It's going to be tasty. Cheers, everybody. Welcome to Pedro and uh, JR. I'm excited to talk to you guys about uh, goofy shit. Let's go for it. Cheers, Fumidor. All right, so moving it on down. Mr. Bacillus, what's going on this week? How you feeling? What's up? All righty. Mr. B is uh, still muted. Oh, sorry. I just stepped away from the camera. Oh. Um, this week, yeah, I'm uh, I'm just working way through week nine. So uh, the plants are getting the chop this week as well. So I'm really excited to uh, try out a few new varieties. That skunk number one is extreme. It's got huge, huge nugs. Like it's looking like ounce, ounce and a half nugs. Like picking up the pots, I thought she was shutting off early and stopping, and she was uh, cutting off on her drinking a little bit. But really, the fucking plant's just so damn heavy. So I'm excited to check out the weight on her and uh, the morning dew. The morning dew is getting funkier and funkier. And uh, that uh, Jägermeister, Jägermeister description that, that that buddy threw out there in the comments the other day. That's a that's a very that's pretty close and pretty spot on. I'm getting that as well, and the black licorice on the back end. So it's gonna be nice. some nice flavors to test out in a few weeks. So yeah, that's what's going on over here. Awesome. Sounds like things are going well. So why don't we move it on over to Rasta Bob? What's going on, Rasta Bob? See him token on his chalice over there. How are you this week, Bob? All right, yeah. Doing good, doing good. How's everyone doing? Everybody all right? Yeah, man, we're all doing good. Yeah, right. give thanks for life, you know. It's great to be here. Give thanks for the moment and give thanks for truth, you know. And give thanks to be able to believe in all the truth. So, yeah, it's a great week again. It's a junior token. Not looking too junior, but, you know, glad to be here and... Good things for you to share for us tonight. We're looking forward to what you have to share with us, you know? Awesome. Thanks for joining us this week, Bob. So moving it on down, Mr. Zen Premium Cannabis. What's going on, Zen? How are you? Yo, what's going on, everybody? Good to be here. Thank you for having me on. I got uh, some candy jam here. I'm trying to burp right now. It's still kind of moist, but... The chirps are turning really nice. It's going from a kind of sour sweet to a really sweet sweet. I also got some morning dew here. Nice musty basement smell I think I got here. It's amazing. Huge buds as well. Nice and dense. Super frosty. All over. Amazing. If you don't know, morning dew is by our buddy Rasta Jeff at Irid Genetics. Thank you, man. Such a fire strain. Um, uh, just harvested some blue cheese and some Stifler's Mom from Telekinetic Genetics. Those are in the dry box as we speak. 
and things are going really well. Let's move along. Thank you. Picks of Golden Goat look super good, buddy. Hey, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. The Terps are incredible. All right. So that wraps up our panel members for this week. And we can get back to hanging out with our guest. Mr. Hey, Dan, Jared. how are you, buddy? How are you? Me? I'm good. Yeah, nobody asks you. I mean, does anybody really care? We do. You're here. We're all here. Ha. I'm doing pretty well, man. I'm in this absolutely comfortable uh new embracing organic shirt oh looking guys, fly too yeah Where'd if you, you guys that? dude if you guys haven't seen them you got to go to teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash embracing organics and that'll show you the full lineup of what we got the one i'm currently wearing is uh organic cotton and recycled plastic bottles and it's actually really comfortable so definitely worth looking at So what so, are you smoking on, Dan? I'm smoking on the very last of my Raphael. <laughs> I mean, dude, I am down to the bare minimums here. But yeah, well, I got clones. There's going to be more coming. I just don't have any more in the near future. Bittersweet. It, it'll be back. Don't worry. Uh, she's She's, like I said, she's been one of my new favorites. And I got some clones rocking in the clone tent, and I'll have them in the no-till bed soon enough. I got a cover crop going in there right now. Probably going to cut the cover crop down soon and put the clones in probably in, like, I don't know, another two or three weeks. What kind of cover crop are you running in there? Is that, like, a mixed seed blender? Yeah, actually, it's um, the Build-A-Soil uh, cover crop blend. So uh, they put, like, white clover red clover they put cow peas in there um they put a couple different things i can't remember all of them off the top of my head but i don't know what cow peas are at all i'm pretty sure they're peas that they grow up to feed the cows for food like literally cow food but uh basically growing a bunch of that up to you know put a bunch of new exudates down into the soil keep all the soil microbes happy and fed while I'm waiting for another cut to go in there. That's basically all I got going on. So what's new with you, JR? What's going on with Cannabuzz over there? Oh man, we got a lot going on with Cannabuzz. Uh, we've got, we just peaked over 26,000 users and awesome. um, we've improved the website quite a bit. And um, you can uh, go onto the website, sign up in an account, and do most almost all the functionality that you can do on the phone app on your PC. Um, we were, we are um, trying to promote people to link in on their posts. So if you've got a website that you sell your stuff at, or if you have a website to an article that's interesting to you that you want to share you're allowed to put links in the post and post up your, uh, whatever you're interested in. So like if, if we wanted to put our Teespring account on there, we're allowed to do yeah. that now. Awesome. Yeah. That, you you can link right to your merch and have people go right to your merch. That's awesome. Let's start from the beginning though. Just like for, for yeah. anybody out there who's never heard of Cannabuzz, like square one, bro. Like, what is it? What are you doing? Yeah. What's like, it awesome. make it different from Instagram? Yeah. Cause they won't fucking well the main the, the main thing yeah is we won't delete your account for any cannabis or mushroom related posting uh, we feel that both mushrooms and cannabis are an important part of a uh, healing humanity and so we want to be able to allow people to express themselves and to learn from each other and to build a community that they can feel safe in and not have to worry about getting the axe you know it takes time to build your community, but once you do build your community, um, you, you have a level playing field. You're not going to just be looking over your shoulder constantly waiting for, you know, the ax to fall. And it's, that was kind of the genesis of Cannabis is uh, I had a YouTube account. Uh, it, I was one of the first people who got deleted. Uh, I was right after Mr. Tight. And it devastated my channel. Uh, and it took me a long time to get people back. I still 
never did get the viewership that I used to have. So I was kind of like, you know, fuck that. It's not cool, man. I mean, we have a right to, to post what our passion is. We're not hurting anyone. We're not doing anything illegal. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I got together with Q and Q is kind of on the same boat. Um, he was kind of fed up with corporate social media. And so we got together and we developed an app uh, it started out just as a phone app, uh, but then we were able to develop the website, get the website integrated into the scenario. And uh, we've just been building and building and building. Uh, recently, we got multi-picture upload, which allows you up to 10 photos at a time. And we uh, got five minute videos. So you can go up to five minutes on your videos at cannabis.app. Awesome, man. I, uh, I can certainly say it's come a long way because I remember back when you guys first started, things were a little rough. You know, you had to you had to kind of, you know, do a little uh, multi uploading if you had to if you wanted to upload more than one picture. But, yeah, you guys have definitely worked on it and you're smoothing things out. And it's nice to see the progression. Yeah, we're building slow. It's not like like we've had people come at us and try to, you know, buy in and we don't want to. We don't want to owe anything to some to an investor who's going to then tell us how we operate and what we do. Um, so we have been growing this thing very slowly and organically. Um, it's been the community that has grown this thing, and it's been the word of the community that's grown this thing. So, uh, like, I'm very grateful and very appreciative and happy to be here. We're yeah, glad man. to have you. It's fun to be able to click in and find other cannabis like-minded folks. And uh, we all love some booty occasionally, but God, Instagram is just overloaded with nothing but booty. I can't even open, if I'm at the oil change place getting an oil change, I can't open Instagram without just being bombarded with booty. So I love that I can open up cannabis and it's just cannabis plants. And if somebody next to me is offended by cannabis plants, that's their problem. I just feel much more comfortable popping open the cannabis and the comments I get, the community that I find, there's no trolling. Nobody's like, oh, you cut it too early or whatever they try to say on other social media. There's no trolling there. So I love that it's actually a community. It's really nice over there. Just cannabis growers. Met a lot of us and there. You, you can thank Q for that. He does a really good job of making sure that there's not a bunch of political bullshit, no conspiracy theories and you know none of that nonsense trolling. Uh, if you're selling, if you directly say, hey, I've got five pounds, here's my number, hit me up. Oh, we can't have that, you know? Uh, shit goes down in the dms we all know that but that ain't that you know there's nothing that we can do about that but posting up you know that kind of content is is problematic yeah, for us. being blatant about it is just asking for a problem and just being obnoxious yeah, and it is it is you don't yeah you don't want that and around our, our community is good at policing itself um our community reports you know if we got scammers on there trying to do bitcoin scams and stuff like that uh, they get they get reported immediately, and those guys are fucking out of there. That's awesome, man. I like hearing that because you don't always uh, see that on you know other applications. Well, that's the really cool thing about where it's at right now. It's like you guys are getting to that critical mass, but it's still small enough that it's just a fucking it's a cool community. You know what I mean? And and most of the people that know about it are kind of in the know, so. It's just a lot of fun. It's a really great place to be. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, we're happy with the way things are going. Uh, we had, you know, some issues with people not really um, being tolerant of other people's expression of cannabis. I guess I'll be blatant and say it. we had uh, some girls that were showing risque photos while they were smoking weed. And we had a few people who were pissed off about that and said that that had no place on our platform. And we, we disagree with that. Uh, we feel like uh, there are many aspects to the cannabis community. Uh, not everybody is a grower. Some people are just smokers. Some people are models and they model for cannabis. Uh, you know, all that kind of shit is welcome at cannabis because we are a full community. And as far as like, uh, building your community you can go to groups and join groups and that's a good way to meet people who are interested in the same thing that you're interested in like the iree genetics group man that one's a good one that's a hot group man 
It is. I ha- I happen to know a guy. He might be like the mayor of that place. I, I don't yeah. know anything. Definitely. That's and that's uh Rasta Jeff has shown what you can do with the community as far as building your platform and getting your message out there and getting people to respond. Um, when they go on and they see somebody growing the dark hollow and it looks dank as fuck, they're going to be like, hell yes, I'm going to get a hold of Rasta Jeff and buy those seeds, you know? And the more of us in the community that can do that for each other, I think the better off we're all going to be. I've got my own group chat over there in iReGenetics breeder section. I used to go try to field all of the questions. It's a little overwhelming. There's so much chat going on there. I don't need to go answer the questions anymore. My community is handling that for me. They're answering. If somebody says, hey, what's the cross on this? Two people have already chimed in before I got there and they told them how to grow it, where to find my podcast about it. So I love that they've got my back over there. I've already created like a little, yeah, I've got a community over there answering questions for me. And then I've made it real easy. If I post a picture of Dark Hollow, uh, we were talking about the links earlier. I put a link to a vendor that's got Dark Hollow. So you can see the picture, read the description, and then click right on it. It'll take you over to Seeds Here Now. You can grab the Dark Hollow. So that makes it super easy having that link in there. And I would love to invite Pedro to bring the glass community on to Cannabis. Uh, we don't have a, a large glass presence. A lot of people have glass and they show the stuff they're proud of, but we don't have legitimate blowers and artists coming on saying, here's my gear here's the website, you can go get it here and that kind of thing. So I really would invite any and all of the glass community to come join the cannabis community. From the a business person's perspective, it's a very good idea to be over there. That would be so awesome to see a lot of glass and cannabis. I know yeah. that would definitely make me sign in a little bit more than I do if there was more glass in there. There's one well, they, new... go, they go hand in hand. I mean... Yeah, you, I'm not going to lie. I, there comes a time in the day where I'm like, all right, I'm tired of looking at plants. I want to look at something else, but I don't feel like looking at booty, like Jeff was saying. Like, so then like, I'll go start looking at like cars or something like that just because I get bored of looking at plants. But like, you start throwing some glass in there, that's a whole nother couple hours of me just going, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Get Coil and Bertoni over there. We'd have all yeah, the stuff going on. I know a lot of glass guys would be pumped about that. Like uh, Salt Glass is posting about that kind of smaller app, um, Glass Grab app. He was all like promoting it. I'm sure they sponsored him, but yeah, um, it's cool that he was doing that for another app. He might do it for Cannon Buzz if he saw that it was a good platform to post on. I know a very talented young lady grower who's just uh, kind of coming up and getting hot at her game. She needs to get over there. She's probably watching this. Go make a glass account on Cannon Buzz. Hell yeah. Do it. I promise people will respond. They will respond. And if you direct message me at J period, R period space token, uh, I can pin your post to the top so that all, every time somebody logs in, they'll see your post. And that's something that uh, Sam's been really good about. Uh, he's been uh, finding people in the community and then pinning them to the top so that they can be introduced to the community and then they can gain some followers and gain some friends and start their momentum. So if you're out there and you're a business or if you've got a product that you're trying to, uh, you know, get out there, uh, just get a hold of me, direct message me. I can pin your post and we can start building your community. Yeah, man. And um, it's it's really no joke to live in fear of having your account yaked away from you, even though you're not hurting anybody or breaking any laws, you know, yeah, so five years of work and you're like, yeah. you're going to be deleted. Bro, I've worked so fucking hard and I'm about to hit like 5000 followers and to just have that taken away from me, you know, at the drop of a hat for for no good reason. I mean, I know Pedro just got his Instagram jacked and that really scares me. Like it's an existential threat. It's not just like, oh, all my cool photos. Like that's my fucking livelihood, man. Like well, my DMs and, would yeah. be devastating. Not not that I've got like, not that kind of DMs. I got business happened in there. Like that's where yeah. I talk to a lot of my vendors and I don't even know how to contact them otherwise. So yeah, it would, it would devastate me. Hopefully they, uh, they know about your backup accounts. Yeah, and that's the thing is you're constantly creating accounts, you're constantly getting shadow banned, your content's being deleted, um, and, and and 
you know, like I said, it's, it's kind of a tough sell because you got to do it. You got to put in the work, you got to build your community. Um, but the alternative is that fear, that constant fear of them coming and cutting you down. You know what I mean? And so at some point you just got to rip the band aid and just fucking go for it and try to build it. Uh, gentlemen, I would say that with ganja, cannabis, whatever you call it, it's a part of the business. It's something that it comes with the territory in one way or the other. No disrespect. I mean, while I had our genetics, while I had a little notebooks or whatever, and when you have to relocate or as a raid coming on, you lose a bunch of stuff. So it's just really a part of it that won't really leave. That's why when a lot of these big investors come in and wonder why their bubble is bursting, it's just a part of it. We're going to have a crap go bad. We're going to have our friends who have us. Or we're going to have the police take away. So it's just like something. It's just something that comes with the whole tradition of ganja and our whole. You have to roll with the punches. However, when you have a platform like this that is providing that security up front, is members like us should really be the ones to be somewhat happy. So for example, if somehow there becomes a state that uh, some cannabis somebody comes up with a line of credit unions internationally across the world that will be cannabis friendly and just happen to use it okay we're going to limit it at the you know our credit union cannot do anything over a million dollars but we just multiply it so you might have five ten or twenty in an area or whatever it might be you know then we are supported so it's pretty similar to what you have created and really i forgive thanks you know if this is where it is, not because YouTube is the hottest trend or Instagram, use everything. So if you put something up on YouTube, yeah, can I buzz it as well? It have a buzz, you know? And at least I appreciate that. Appreciate thing. that. I mean, and it should be just the same thing with Rasta Jeff. And this is what you'll find on both sides of the community. Once we identify somebody that we are happy with and we're going to recommend it or a clone that we're going to pass on or genetics that we bred and it was good. Ganja is something that is to share. Is There's something about it that even the, you would say the most monetarily rich person with cannabis, if they're really a ganja person, you can go to their yard and they will give you the top shelf about that lamb's bread and say, yeah, and they, they want a dollar for it. It's something that they do have a price. So it has that nature within it that will... You know, it's a part of it as well. You know, so the same thing we share with Rasta Jeff. Me and Fumudo was talking earlier in the week. And, you know, HSO, well, maybe I shouldn't say Fumudo. My, my apologies, sir. I don't want to call you out. But I don't have any problem saying it because, you know, you know, we get genetics from everybody. As I told Pedro, I mean, we've been through the critical and the mass and I had good results. It was just big. It was just too big of a bush to go in my yard. I would only have to go two trees because it was just, it wouldn't stop. You know, it was just really critical. You know what I mean? It was hitting so, critical mass, yeah. Yeah, it really, you know, really was that. But they were saying HSO, and honestly, I've got to probably some of the worst results from HSO, 100%. I'm not going to lie, yo. The worst, you know. But I really got some good things as well. But when you have somebody like Rasta Jeff that will tell you what it is, and then the community is there to say, yeah, we can agree there's going to be a lot of stretchy ones. Uh, at least you're going knowing. You don't go in fully blind. You know, so even that you're more comfortable with and moving with. So it's just really like that. So we just, you know, we give thanks. And once we get more group, this is the, as the Rasta would say, communal security that we really need to ensure that it is regenerative. And whatever changes happens within the universe, we will adapt and move with it. You know, it's not monotonous. So, you know, give a thanks and I would love you to keep expounding and we'll all just keep, you know, pushing it. Because I myself, I see it and maybe because I'm not, this is probably the only thing I really keep up with in terms of trying to be on social media, you know. But when you hear about things like this now, it sparks an interest, you know, and things like this is where you need to be or probably where you should invest your time for a better pull, you know. So, give a thanks again. Yeah, I think you're right, though. I think, you know, this that is the strength. And our knowledge that we share lifts each other up and builds us to be better and stronger. Um, I, th I like Pedro. I mean, he puts in hours and hours and hours on his videos on technique and stuff that he does. And uh, that kind of dedication should be rewarded. 
Yeah, and, and it saves us a lot of the trouble, just like Jeff was saying. I don't have to tell anybody about this train. I can just say, yo, go on this podcast. Go on. And even if they're really a lazy person, I'll take the time and look it up and send it via WhatsApp. This is the link. Just click on that show and you will learn everything about breeding or you will learn every, everything about star shadow or scragging or, you know, pressing or rasm live butter or whatever it is. It saves me the time. Maybe I might miscommunicate something at some point or miss out a very key parameter. I hate this, what they call standard operating procedures, SOPs. You got to create SOPs. With ganja, it's not really that easy. Believe me, it doesn't come with SOPs, my brother. So I like to use parameters. Let's get some parameters of operation. So the worst you want to go is here and the minimum and figure out your sweet spot, dial in what's good for you and you'll figure it out. But the, the SOPs, I don't know. You can't replicate it in Jamaica. And, oh yeah, I'm going in Alaska. I'm, you're going to do it the exact same way. Not going to work out, you know? So once we share these parameters and if we find somebody that has the parameters that I don't want to waste my time and explain it. Yo, go and check JR. Or, you know, this man knows about light. Even if you don't buy a light from Black Seal directly, I'm sure he'll be able to share his knowledge just by what he has presented on YouTube or whatever. So you'll get a better understanding. And it's coming from a, a trusted source. As I said, that security that we are looking for. So whether it's environmental, your food, your mind, your brain, whatever it is, that security and our package can be secured, you know? So any investors out there that's having a bank or a bank of credit union in mind that want to put up a chain, you have a good support crowd, a whole army of people that's ready to support. You have Rasta Jeff Colt, you have a lot of different people that's ready to go. Yeah, I think banking and fine and dealing with banks is, has been a real, you know, a real kind of thorn in our side. Uh, here in Oregon, we have the teachers credit unions that have started doing banking, but Credit card processing and shit like that is still very difficult uh, if you're in a cannabis industry. And that's kind of the thing like with cannabis, um, when we promote, we promote to a global community. So some things go better than others. So like if you are a glass blower, you can ship glass anywhere in the world, you know? Or if you're an apparel person and you're making t-shirts, uh, you can put up shirts and stuff like that and ship them anywhere. Um, obviously, if you're doing a CBD product or a, a THC product, uh, edible or whatever, uh, that's a different story. Um, it's harder. And or even like if you're a dispensary, like say a local dispensary, well, they're not going to get a shit ton of patrons in their local area that are going to come in uh, because the community is vast and wide and spread out. So an online presence uh, would definitely be beneficial. Whatever we're doing is working because I'm getting a lot of cannabis notifications on my phone right now. Excellent. I know I'm seeing that. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I should oh, check mine. That's, that's the really exciting part, man, is that it's really catching on and it's like, it, again, it's just so nice to have a place to go where you know that your work is safe, man. You know, even if you are just backing up everything you do on Instagram, like copy that shit over yeah. to Cannabuzz where you know nobody's going to fuck with it. Finally, like, and on that remember, note, thank you. Say, so we have to like worry about what bank am I going to go to? Like, what social media platform am I going to use where I'm not going to get fucking persecuted, man? You know? For nothing but just like being a gardener with like good intentions and like <laughs> right like who who would have thought in 2020 uh gardening a plant would have been you know been taken so hostile by some people yeah it sucks. it's kind of a it's a bizarre thing uh, the way people have associations with with uh what they consider drugs is weird to me like, I mean, they'll be, they'll sit there and hate on cannabis all night and day and then go to the local freaking coffee place and get fucking Jones out of their mind on caffeine, you know? And so it's like, I don't see how people could be so narrow minded about things. And I understand a lot of it was like propaganda and bullshit fucking lies that, you know, a lot of people were taught through our system of control. And I think that now that that veil has kind of dropped, um, it gives people the opportunity to get out there and start blazing without 
having, you know, those negative associations. I mean, I still deal with it with my own family. I have people who, um, they judge me. They judge me for who I am and they judge me for what I do. And um, they'll probably do that till the day I die. And there's nothing I can do about that. I just got to keep doing what I know is right and, you know, pushing forward. And also, I would say, I would recommend Bob on the job, by the way. So I'm very business focused a lot of time. And this is kind of what I do. So just hearing what you do, I would say, first point, just like the Zoom epidemic, they didn't know they would have really gotten so big and they were kind of ready and a lot of crashes. Get yourself prepared. Because if you're really doing this, I always plan to go big. How can you really? Because if you really start getting the amount of hits that you want to get, the amount of data compilation, the space you're going to need, I'm not really sure on the key factors that you're going to need within your direct realm. But get ready to be something like the Amazon or the next stage where you can provide that midway trans transition transitioning point for a lot of people that hub network get you know get ready for the online conferences and you know things like that because you will basically have all these tools to your fingertips that you can now put forward and as I said once you have the, the, the strength of the community that core strength of the real ganja essence people it will only go further and this is what we want the whole world to embrace that organics in whichever way you really find step by step so it might be even in the way you treat people your ethical movements how you conduct yourself on a daily basis you know so different things will come into it how you even conduct your business how you treat your wife your kids your dog you know your, your plants things like that so what just on a whole i would definitely say super you know kind of just prepare yourself for where this is going and I always envision the long run with a broad scale because you can definitely take it through with this you know yeah, I hope so. I mean, I hope that I hope that it does grow and become something great. Um, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the community that we built. Uh, we we help each other. And we're there for each other. And there, like I said, there's no judgment. I mean, one of the points I make, I try not to get too preachy, but uh, it's easy to love people who agree with you and who love you but it's harder to love people who don't agree with you and hate you, but love always wins. So you got to love. I was going to ask, man, like, how did, uh, how did this thing get started? Like who, who was involved? Like. Uh, the big part of the uh, technological uh, application and implementation was all Q. Q grows did. Uh, all of the admin work. Uh, he works with Honeycomb, which is our uh, platform, who provides our platform for uh, for us. They do all our data housing, all that kind of stuff, uh, the website, all of it. Um, and so Q was the one who was making all that happen. So I guess Q grows as though it would be the answer to that question. He's like the technical genius then? He is. He really is. I mean, I feel bad for the guy because anytime I can't figure out my phone, I call him. <laughs> okay, cool, man. And then like, what made you guys want to put this together? I mean, was it just people getting their accounts jacked? On, yeah, on yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen it coming. I've seen it coming. And I've seen the way corporate social media uh, was how they felt about our community. Um, a lot of people said it was an out of control algorithm, but I don't buy that shit. Um, I, it, it happened to be right around the same time that they brought on all their kids content and all the children's content. And so I think they were trying to purge us. And when they did that, I think that it didn't work out as well for them as I thought. I think there's more backlash than maybe they thought. It, they wound up kicking out more people than they wanted. I think so. I think so. And so then they dialed that back and reinstituted uh, accounts. And uh, like I said, my account has never been the same since. And for some of those guys like Urban Remo, I mean, shit, his first account had thou like, I don't even remember, like 60,000 members or something like that. And then he had, and Mr. Tight, same with him. He had thousands and thousands of members. And those dudes had to fucking start over with one, with no members. 
So that was the genesis. I mean, like I said, they don't show us any love. So why can't we just do our own thing? Why do we need them? We don't need them. Um, they provide a sense of security in that we get exposure. We get a certain number of people who look at our shit. Um, but I think like Ross and Jeff has said, if you invest the time, uh, you can make it happen over at Canvas just as easily as you can at Instagram. It's not about having a big account following. It's about having a tight following. Like if you got 10,000 friends that don't interact, that's not going to do you any good. But if you got five bad motherfuckers next to you, you can conquer the world. So I love that I've got a really tight knit community over there. They may not be the biggest audience, but uh, I talk to each and every one of them and that's what matters. Agreed. Agreed. And I think that's gracious of you. Um, you know, breeders in our industry are like the rock stars. You know what I mean? They're the people that uh, carry the most clout. And a lot of, a lot of people, um, a lot of people are hard to access, you know, it's hard to get to them to get yeah. questions. And, you know, just and I think we should act I like you, people. Yeah. I think you do a fantastic job of that, Jeff. Thank you, you brother. Know. Thank you. But without, uh, if it were just me, if it weren't everybody on the other end, this wouldn't be anything. This would be a failure. So it's all of them that are making it successful. I mean, I put in the work, but they support it without all the support. I wouldn't eat, you know, so I've got to be humble and got to do, I don't know. I only know how to be a good dude. I don't know how to be a shady dickhead to people. That wouldn't feel right. You know, I wouldn't just wouldn't even feel good. So yeah, got to come out. I put my face on the package, dude. My face is on the back of my packaging. I've got to, got to represent it properly. Yeah, come yeah. up to the damn booth and give me a high five. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I'll meet everybody at the booth. I'll give you a hug, a high five. I'll smoke a dab with you. If it's not COVID times. Yeah. Come hang out. I'm just a person. I am six five with dreads to my knees, but I'm not as scary as I look. He's a tall. He is a tall person, but he's still a person. Yeah, yeah. I could be intimidating if I need to, but I don't try. Yeah, I remember. I think it was like the third DGC Cup that we had there. I think it was the first time at Cultivated Synergy. Uh, that's the first time I met you. Yeah. Uh, and you told me you were starting a podcast and that you were breeding and you handed me some seeds and I'm grateful. I still have them. Excellent. Yeah. I hook everybody up at those events. When I make new friends, I like to hook people up, share the beans. I got the cream. I've been holding nice. on. Nice. It's a good cross. It's uh, yes. it's not going to be around super much longer. So you're lucky you've got some. That's how I feel. Very lucky. Very lucky. Yeah. And your packaging has come a long way. Thank you. Uh, I actually am working with an artist he may be watching. So I'm working with a guy uh, redesigning some new five and 10 packs that should be ready pretty soon. So the next batches will come out in brand new packaging. Got to stay, uh, stay relevant. Keep evolving. Yeah. While, while we're on the topic of packaging, we get different packages. So sometimes we get packages with um, rice, like, you know, with they come with rice or sometimes they come with like these spongy kind of things like styrofoam. Yeah. And sometimes they come with cotton. Do you think at any time, if like the person batch their seeds too early, those things will suck moisture from the seeds? Well, the rice is definitely going to be a desiccant, no? The sponge. Yeah, it's, no. it's going to suck up any humidity that the pack might run into in transit. What I'm basically saying is probably which one is the best one to use. Now, that's what I'm probably trying to get at. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people use rice. I mean, that's what I think, but I'm just wondering the styrofoam ones. I got some from some people, and I'm wondering if that that is assisting my low germination rate. And also, I guess storage of seeds you can you know quickly. I usually try to put them in um in the fridge, but in a thermos, like a coffee cup, you know, insulated kind of, you know. And well, styrofoam is, is plastic, right? So it's not going to absorb any water. So I would think that styrofoam wouldn't be the best, although it would be good for padding and packaging. Uh, it might not be the best for absorbing water if they were harvested earlier, came into water in transit. Well, I'm just saying maybe if they were maybe put in super fresh, you know, you, some breeders like to keep their seeds for maybe a couple of weeks before they kind of put them out. Some people as immediately they harvest, they package them and send them out. So. It kind of depends, but I'm just wondering if there's any moisture in the seed, if the packaging would help, like cotton. I don't know if cotton would like 
you know, sucking my out of this. I don't know if it's if, the safest thing to I use. feel like if there's enough moisture in the seed for that to matter, they packaged it way too early and they already made a mistake. That's how I feel. That's the bottom line, I think. Because my seeds are dry. Like I let the buds get, I cut the plants down and I let them hang for like 14 days. And then I just shuck the buds into a container and then I wear gloves and just grind it up to dust. It's dusty before I even sort the seeds out. It's so much easier to sort it when it's real dry. Yeah, yeah. Not so sticky, huh? Yeah. Yep. And the buds just and fall out. Jeff, do you utilize any of that material that's left over after you kind of crush everything and extract all the seeds out of it? It really depends on how, uh, how many seeds were in the plant. And if there's a need for it, honestly, I've probably got a couple pounds of just dusty material that I don't have a use for that may end up in my Bokashi bin. It's been, uh, it's been finger banged to death. It's not even useful. I don't think you can make me make edibles or something, but yeah, a lot of it goes in a Bokashi bin or into a compost pile. Have you always done that 14 week dry for your seeds? 14 day, 14 day. Oh, sorry, 14 day. Have you always done that 14 day or have you used to do a different method? Uh, I'm pretty sure I evolved into that. I just like them real. I've, I'm using the uh, easy seed seed sorter and I've learned that the drier, the drier, the better. So I just get them super dry and it's free. Just let them hang there. It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't take any effort. So you just let them hang until you get time. And then when you get time, go and destroy them and take the seeds out. And you also have the benefit of living in Colorado. So it's, it's always dry there. Right. Yeah, it's super dry here. But I'm not worried about it. I'm not curing the buds or anything. Like I said, it goes in the Bokashi bin. So the buds aren't even a, an issue. I just need seeds. I don't know. I mean, personally, because we do a lot of the breeding in the bush. So traditionally, every farmer is a breeder. You always have a small garden that you set and you breed a set of seeds for yourself. You know, it's kind of tradition, you know, so... But it's usually on the opposite side or somewhere far away, you know, far enough away. So if you plant on this side of the hill, probably you go now on this side and do your breeding. You know, you set a small patch, maybe a 10 by 10 square area, you dig it out and put your mother plants and a couple meal. But, you know, me traditionally, I find that I like to keep my seeds in the bud itself. So like I dry, 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 as Jeff would say, super dry. And I can keep try to keep like one nugget, one headbutt, just filled with seeds, super dry, and then I leave it, you know. Because back then we weren't really labeling and this and that, but even just by the looks or maybe the packaging, you know, I use you can kind of remember, okay, that was this or that was that, you know, it kind of gives you back. And once you cure it, so I cure them in the bud, you know, I always leave them in the try to leave. So I have them from like 2006, 2004, still have a headbutt nugget full, well-bred, full with seeds, you know. So that's how so I have always stored them because we don't have refrigerator and things like that. So, you know, just keep them kind of cool. You know what? But I keep them in the bud itself. I shake some out as well, you know, so I always have some, but I always find that just as a habit, I just keep some within the bud itself, you know, like a full bud, like a nugget that I know that is fully bred. I let that dry fully, cure it fully, just like I'll be ready to smoke it and then put it together with the packages and just put those seeds in the safe, you know? And do you find- I was gonna ask you guys if, uh, if, go ahead, business. Sorry, uh, do you find they're preserved better when you leave them in the bud? It was just a habit that I, I saw my auntie and uncles, so I just kind of follow the tradition really, and it works, and it, you know? So yeah, I I'm, put it this way, the one that I'm my friend, what was it called, it? my buddy trip? Yeah, that got to Jeff the other day. <laughs> I mean, you can tell you, those are maybe like, they're pushing 30 years old was the last time they were bred. So if they even germinate at all, you let me know. But it was done that style, you know. I had to, I had to like do this before and get out the beans directly. So, I mean, I had 30 of them on a wall. So, I mean, let's see what happens. I still have about 20 left, you know. So I want to see what can happen. If you, uh, if you ask me, it sounds like you left a little extra armor on them so they can they can weather the storm, so to speak. Well, I just figure in nature, that's how the kind of were. They hang on the tree, they stay through the cold part, and really in the spring, they might shell off, or whether it's birds or cows passing or something, some might fall out, because they do squeeze out. Some of them always push right out, and they will actually fall down around. 
you know, and then you have some that's inside, inside, and the inside of the bud, you know, those will pretty much stay inside forever. But once the tree dries down, so even like my last breeding I did, Sincere, I reaped it in about March. And right now, the stick is still up there with a couple buds left on there with seeds in it. You know, so if a bird wants to eat, she can eat uh, whatever. But usually when I'm finished like this current cycle, if there's anything less, I'll just trash it out and just plant it in the same area and just let them go. And they always do good. So I just figure why not is the best way to keep them. But as I said, I don't stick to one way. I try to adapt as many styles as I can to try to preserve, you know, the genetics. So I'm looking through uh, chat here, and Jucifer from Grow, Oklahoma, said a uh, super dry bud would actually work the same as like a desiccant. So like it would pretty much kind of be the same thing as you know putting your seeds in rice. Well, I think that's what we look for in the bush community. You know, we kind of we look for science science to prove us right and give us some parameters. God damn it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> No, that makes sense, man. It's always important to remember that the plant's like actual goal was never to like get us high. It was to like make that seed. How do you it, know that? Keep it safe. How are you so sure about that? Because if it wasn't doing that, it wouldn't have been traveled around so much. It wouldn't have been bred so much. It wouldn't have been so accepted and preserved. When you think about it, and you know, they have different communities that are still not accepted in life right now. You know, you have these Black Lives Movement, you have the LGBT, you have the short, you know, so you have a lot of different societies that are still fighting for some reason for acceptance. But within the ganja plant, hermaphrodites and breeding back crossing, putting your mom to your son and your cousin and all kinds of things, why they accepted? So how are you so sure that it wasn't? If I do these to these people, they'll keep us going and bring us everywhere. They bring us indoors and give us light. Yeah. They, you know, they preserve us for 30 years in class. Come on now. I, I don't know, but hey. No, you're right, bro. You're right. And no, like, no, no, I, there's like, no right or wrong. Bob will no, never no, no. Me. Like it's, and you're right. There is no right and wrong. It's like a dialogue. Like half of my mind is very convinced that like the very Darwinian explanation, mutations are random and they either help you survive and breed or they don't, you know? And and it's just a, a blind process of, of natural selection. And that's kind of half my mind. And then the other half of the time is like, man, like there's some kind of fucking connection, you know? Yeah, you want to well, believe I, that I, it's I, something deeper. And, I, and I sometimes wonder, I do believe it. Well, I watched that Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia about uh, the smoking the toad and uh the question could be asked the same as for cannabis was the toad created for humanity and for the experience that it gets when it engages with the toad or was the toad just here to get a lady and get another toad oh i would no. like to, i would like to think that uh you know the experiences that we are given are actually here for us. Not that we just happen to stumble upon some type of chemical reaction. I think the toad and us were made separately. And then it just so happens that the toad's defense fucks us up just like it does other mammals when it tries to eat them. I think it, it, it it's the whole idea was to fuck up things to try to eat it, but we're too big or we're different than that. So instead of getting fucked up, we get a cool little trip from it. We like you, and, right? and yeah. we're, we're fucked up. So we should be like, Oh, I'm poisoned. I'm going to die. I got to go to the hospital, but we're fucking mentally ill. So we're like, yes, let's do that again. Like that's, so that's part of our fucked up that, psychology. I learned today that dolphins suck and play with uh puffer fish and they yep. suck the poison and play with it like a soccer ball and get super tripped out and psychoactive off oh, of it. Fuck. But if we even consume a fucking little tiny BB of it, it'll kill 30 of us. Yep. Yeah. Dolphins are also a, one of the only other creatures that fuck for pleasure. Like most other creatures, yeah. they're straight fucking for breeding, but dolphins, they fuck for fun. I don't remember where I heard it, but somebody said the reason why they do that is because they are able to like they're like a higher thinking animal like we are like they're they're conscious of their own being they're they know what's going on around them more so than just like the instincts of like an ant or something like that 
That's why they like it can go really they deep. Like fucking. Both. Yeah, it can go. Okay. It can go. I mean, that whole thing can go really deep. I mean, there's a lot of mammals and animals I think that have intelligence, and they, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like they uh, use their intelligence to get with another person or another mate, and then they make more of themselves. Yeah, I was actually listening to uh, Joe Rogan the other day. And it was one of the older episodes. He was talking to uh, Forrest Gallant. And they were going on about how, um, you know, like, what is it? Leopard, leopards or jaguars in the jungle will actually go out and seek out uh, psychedelic plants. And then they'll eat them. And then they'll go hunting afterwards. And, like, once they're done tripping and stuff. Because they believe that the it gives the jaguar uh, heightened senses. So we're not the only we're not the only people or we're not the only animals in the world that uh, go after these things. Or just like cats and catnip. Mm-hmm. I mean, my my cat goes motherfucking crazy when she gets a hold of a catnip. Someone told me you can make catnip tea for them and put and then it's in their water and it's super concentrated and they <laughs> really fucking trip out, I guess. <laughs> But I don't know if that's cool. Cat nip dabs, basically. It makes like sense, giving your yeah. cat an edible. Yeah, it's cat shine. Yeah. I think more of like yeah, a mushroom totally. tea. Yeah, it's totally. Well, it's just funny because like uh it it's it's almost like there's a interplay between your survival strategy and your environment. You know, who knew that people were gonna come along and change the whole environment? And um but I mean in, in terms of like an adaptation for survival, uh getting people fucked up seems to be like a really nice niche to slide into. You know what I mean? Like psilocybin mushrooms are spread across the globe. Cannabis is spread across the globe, you know? And if we ever leave this planet, if we ever make it somewhere else, which is like the ultimate survival strategy is to become like, you know, a multi-planetary species. Intergalactic. Uh, Guess who's fucking coming with us, man? Is some fucking cannabis seeds. I guarantee it. Probably somebody's gonna bring some mushrooms too, man. So yeah, we start traveling the stars like that. We're gonna figure out that when aliens suck our blood, they're gonna trip balls, and then guess what? <laughs> Listen, I don't know about you guys, but um, all you got to do is eat enough mushrooms, and you're gonna go travel the stars. Tanasi, when we get to other planets, you want to eat some of those mushrooms there with me? And then travel back. <laughs> Bro, if you go to Mars and eat mushrooms on Mars, do you go to Earth? <laughs> hey, that's funny you say that because I actually plan my ceremonial doses around like planetary, like it's winter and with summer solstice and full moons and stuff like that. Planetary events, yeah. So, and I think it's because you can get out farther during those alignments with the planets and whatnot. So that's funny you say that because I do believe kind of like along those lines. Maybe we already we get closer somewhere. You know what comes to mind when you're talking about that? Did you ever hear that song by uh, what's it, Elton John? It's Rocket Man. Rocket Man. <laughs> also, yeah, of if you're high enough on mushrooms, you cannot get struck by lightning, and that is legally binding <laughs> medical advice. You heard it first here on Embracing Organics. That's why we go to the top of 14ers all the time. What? Test this theory. That's what? True. I've never heard this before. Uh, at least I've we know what happened heard. to them. At least we will know thing. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is comical, guys. We're being funny on that joke. Dab's up. Hell yeah, rip your bong, hit your blunt, take your dab. Let's good, rip it good up together. Good idea. I'm taking a dab organics. this whole fucking episode. What's wrong with me? Wait, I'm over here working. Whoa. Jeff hasn't dabbed the entire episode. Something's wrong. Whoa. We Tanasi hit that bell again. We need to we need to make sure this happens. We're gonna get it. I'm gonna crack open. Look, it's still sealed. It's got the sealed right there. It hasn't been open. We'll crack this fucking gram open and we'll get in it. Don't worry. Hell yeah. What we'll get smoking? in it. What are you smoking on? This is Gunslinger Remix Live Batter from Green Dot Labs. You ready for this? On the package, the flavor is described as sour fruit and fuel. As I crack it open, I am greeted with a sour fruit medley. Then as I put it closer to my face. I get this gassy obnoxiousness that makes my nose want to wrinkle up a little bit. So I'm ready to take a dab of it. Look at the color. That shit is beautiful. 
I felt like I was just listening to the Grow From Your Heart podcast. That's, that was the idea there. there. On the back of the package, it says this product does contain 65.83% THC and non-detectable amounts of CBD. Big shout out to my friends at Green Dot Labs for the tremendous... I'm just fucking with you guys, Jesus. <laughs> Same exact thing. It sounded exactly like the Grow From Your Heart podcast. Well, I've done that show the, a couple of times. And the funny thing is, is I, I just wish I could describe my fucking flavors and concentrates like you do. I just, I'm like, uh, sweet. Like just let that. it sit on your tongue and then think about old shit you've eaten back in the day. Mm, that kind of tastes like a pickle or a in and out burger or something. <laughs> Jeff, Enjoy that, were, Fumador. Enjoy that. Were you a you know chef in a previous bite. life? No, but so many people ask me if I have culinary experience. I'm you, The way you describe things, it sounds as though you've had some type of culinary training. Or do you uh, just like watching the Food Channel? Dude, I love Gordon. I love watching Gordon Ramsay cuss people out. Uh, I was trying to become the Gordon Ramsay of the weed industry, go into your commercial cultivation and tell you, these plants are so dry. I don't even know an analogy for that, but I wanted to be that guy. Uh, but I just have a flavors, really, st- flavors and smells stick in my tongue. Like, I'd be like, that smells like, I said something like, that smells like grandma's bathroom. And everybody in my family just rolled their eyes because it exactly smelled like grandma's bathroom. Like, just weird smells and aromas, they really stick with me. I think that smells and aromas are... I don't know. They're almost like programmed. I remember smells and aromas more than faces and names. That's wild. That's like the way your brain is wired. I guess so. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like I, I know people who are like uh, super smart and when they hear information, they can retain it and then recall it at will. And uh, that's just the concept that just doesn't, whoa, it just doesn't work for me. I can't do it. I can't do that. Yeah, I can. I can remember, like, if I think of certain places in my past, I can smell the room. I can smell that place. If I think of certain people, I can smell them sometimes. Like, smells really stick with me. What's up, Corey? Good to see you. How's Topanga? Hmm. <laughs> now, are we all too old to think about Topanga like that now? Because the yeah, Topanga I, we remember... I feel weird. I don't know if I can do that. It's not the same Topanga anymore. Not the same Topanga. <laughs> Look her up. She's still pretty hot. Yeah, but I'm I'm not ever thinking about the current Topanga when I think about her. I only remember her as like 14 year old Topanga, and that's just a crime now. That's just weird. That's just yeah. Weird. But you were the same age. Not so, anymore. So is it? That's we're going down a weird path here, guys. Let's just all right. Let's take a, a quick look. You and... you started it. It's your fault. Fuck you guys. Sorry. <clears throat> you showed up. What's up, David? Mm, <laughs> give me a bite, Fumador. Give me a bite of that. No, 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 no. Hey, JR, how are you, bud? Doing good. What you been up to? <laughs> uh, heart. Busy, man. I've been working a lot. I've been working a lot out in the fields these last couple years, making some progress, doing some fun things down in Texas. So, wow. Yeah. That's ballsy, dude. That's like gi- gigantic fucking testicles right there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't I mean, everything's legal. But yeah, it's still kind of a trip. Texas, it's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Good to That's... see you, man. Glad you were able to make the show. Sorry I'm late. Hope I'm not intruding on anything. Came um, at just the right time, buddy. I always happen. That happens to always be the case. So, Dave, fashionably late. As always. Hey, man. Better late than never. Yeah. No, wait, hold on. I gotta. I gotta ask. Um, Tanazi, did 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 you did you get your hair did? He he may have got himself a perm. Yeah, I got I I have I haven't seen it blown up. I've just seen the little thumbnail, and it's too hard on these old man eyes. It's growing out a little bit. I just there have we, curly hair, so there we go. It looks good. Hey yo, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's what's Listen, up. he got he got to get that undershave to keep himself cool in the summertime. It looks good. It looks good. I scooped up about half of this gram, so wish me luck. I was going to say, Jeff, that's a big-ass dab. I want to see this shit. Sure, yo. What you eating over there, Fumador? Get it. Is he eating peppers? He was eating a big old cheese. Banana peppers from In-N-Out. Delicious. Uh, Uh, Just got a fresh delivery from In-N-Out as a nice little surprise. So Sorry, guys. I'm just enjoying it. Oh, enjoy away, my man. Enjoy away. And Jeff's over there trying to destroy his lungs, but it's never going to happen because it's only cannabis. But he's going to try like hell, I'll tell you that. Hell yeah. So, 
What's everybody out in chat smoking on? We have an ass with chat smoking on. Trim your weed, Dave. <laughs> All right. Zen, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Hey, man. My internet turned off. I'm trying to deal with that. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't actually leave the show. I guess it was uh, not that long. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just been turning off randomly, so I'm going to figure out what Spectrum's doing to me because I'm paying them good money for this yeah. service. So uh, I'm going to figure that out real quick. Hey, do, you, then, do, you, you know, do any of you guys have a cable company coming and knocking on your door and bitching because you're putting interference in their in their signal? How much do you torrent? Comcast did that here to me. They tried to. They wanted to come in my house and check out all my fixtures. They said there was some source of interference coming from within my house. Um, I'm running digital ballast. Did you let them so. in? Hell no, dude. I those might have been off. robbers, dude. That I've never heard of no, that happening. It was, it, it was Comcast, and then <laughs> That's I so got, weird. I got a call from them later. Uh, asking if they could come out and uh check out my outside area uh to see if i'm have any this they said loose connectors could be causing the interference because my neighbors apparently are complaining i'm not sure you said you're running a digital your ballast. neighbors are complaining yeah yeah digital ballast what what brand if you don't mind me asking Oh shit! Oh, I don't even remember. To be honest with you, it's been so are they, long. Are they, are they pretty old? Oh hell yeah, they're like, uh, well, not three years old. That's not end of the world. That's no, not that's terrible. not bad. That's yeah. not bad. I was gonna say some of the older ones, like if, like late, 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 late two thousands, early twenty tens. Um, they have some pretty crappy RF blocking, so it's entirely possible. If you're running old digital balance, but those sound new. I I don't know. It's weird. It's a good thing you didn't let them in. That's I would yeah, that's sketchy. I think the only other thing I thought it was, you know, because I'm kind of paranoid. I thought maybe it was the fucking feds or some kind of fucking undercover bullshit trying to get access to my house. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just told them I told them to fuck off. In the classic J.R. Tolkien fashion, I bet. Good idea, man. Tell him to fuck off, take a bong rip, and that's it. I'm going to have some of this Mendo dope right now. Just nice. tell him to please fuck off, then it's okay. Yeah. Would you kindly go fuck yourself? Kindly. <laughs> you're not, yeah, you're not coming in my house to look in every room in my house. That's definitely not going to be a thing you're doing. Ask him if you can go to their house and look around. <laughs> right. Right. Totally. Wait, can, I, can I come over to your house for dinner tonight? Uh, no. Well, then why would you come in my house? That dad did not give me a runny nose. Holy shit. <laughs> Fumador, what's going on, buddy? Trying to tell weird, inappropriate jokes about uh, Comcast. Dude, Comcast raised my bill like 30 bucks. I just noticed today. Fuck Comcast, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Seriously, I just noticed that today if we're talking about Comcast. I got to call in and be like, dude, like nothing changed, but suddenly you want more money. Blow me. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what's changed is you're getting less content than you were before Probably. because of, you know, because of COVID, you're watching old games, if that's what you dude, like. We don't to even do, watch or... TV. That's the best part. We basically use it for internet and a little bit of TV. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it'll be on yeah. a little bit. That's what it is. And they're like, no, please pay us more money. Okay. By the way, yeah, man, I'm throwing this out there, but uh, fucking 11 years ago today, there was this great show called Community, and I just discovered it like this week, and I'm losing my fucking <laughs> mind. I know there's, I know we're talking to a stoner audience, so when I say like the the guy who wrote Rick and Morty, I know that's gonna mean something to you. Like, yeah, man, my buddy's got me. I watched a couple episodes, kind of stopped, and I'm getting back into it, man. It's a funny fucking show. Fucking loving dude. it, man, loving it. Dan Harmon is a genius. Anyway, great stoner show. Official endorsement. Zen and Keith approved.
So I'll talk some more about the dark hollow that I just got done doing. You know, JR, I was just going to ask you, actually, if you don't mind. Uh, we've talked about Cannabis, which is fantastic. We've talked about Dark Hollow, which is a lovely strain. I'm actually thinking about growing that myself. But we haven't talked about, you're kind of, in my view, one of the, you talked about how your, your YouTube channel had already been fairly big. I remember it way back when it, it got chopped down. I remember that. I watched your, your, your channel every single week. You were... I feel like one of the kind of weed pioneers, you know, you weren't, let's say Mel Frank or one of those guys in the seventies, but for the modern generation, you're definitely the guy that a lot of people look up to definitely on stuff like cannabis or even Instagram or whatever else. Everybody fucking knows JR, everybody from the DGC, everybody. How did you get into weed and how did you get into weed way back when basically? Cause there's tons of people who've been smoking, wow. weed, but they're not JR token. You know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what, um, the, the thing when I was young is when indoor really good bud. This is 1982. We, our seaside Oregon town was known for its skunk bud. And people would travel from all over the place. Tourists would come from all over to try and get our skunk bud. And uh, so when I started smoking, it makes me kind of a weed snob because I started smoking some of the most fucking chronic weed in the world at a very young age. So I was blessed where a lot of dudes were still fucking moving sticks and stems and seeds. Um, I was, a, I was smoking on killer green fucking bud. And so that's kind of what started my journey. Uh, and I've always uh, gravitated towards cannabis um, through thick and thin. And uh, it saved my life. Uh, it gives me great joy. And um, I, I, I'm grateful. And like, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say, you know, what my life would have been like had I not went down that path. You know, I don't know if I would be the same person if I was just, you know, kind of stuffy, angry, maybe alcoholic type guy. You know, would I be that same person? I think cannabis has shaped the way I am. It shapes the way I interact with people. Um, if you watch my channel, I'm just asking you guys to love each other. That's all. You know, I know a lot of people don't agree with each other, but I still would like you to love each other. So yeah, that's kind of my story is uh, as far as cannabis goes, um, I've been really lucky to be around a uh, really thriving indoor uh, scene uh, since the early 80s. That's awesome. Love JR, you. Sometimes, you uh, sometimes when I have uh, maybe, you know, some customers require like more attention than others, you know? And if I ever feel myself like getting annoyed with a person, it's always nice to remember that we're part of a really small community. Like these are certain checkpoints for like how much of my friend you're gonna be. Like not only does this person smoke weed, but they love it so much that they fucking grow weed. So you gotta remember that no matter what we have apart, like that is, that is a huge thing that we have in common. And it's easy. It it's easier. Go ahead, Fumador. I was just going to say we have it in common because of people like you, because you were out there showing people how to grow and that you grew. You were just out and proud. You're at every single event. I mean, that's one of the reasons why people know you. You're at every single possible event. Not these days, of course, but when we used to have that kind of stuff, you were out there. Most of the time you were puffing. It's not that legal to puff at Oregon, but you do it anyway, because that's just what you do, right? It's peaceful disobedience, right? And so people are actually able to do stuff like that more freely because of people like you. And you were able to do it because of people like blah 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 for example who are some of your heroes that got you into it maybe that's something you'd, you'd like to talk about uh yeah uh well, my best friend his dad was a grower and uh he grew the strain called the delta not a huge producer but the buds would be like crystally silver with sap i mean it would look literally almost dripping with resin and uh that's how i i saw that lifestyle like we would We'd be hanging out, doing our thing while the dudes would be at the table trimming, talking shit, you know, talking about the ladies and stuff like that. And so it was really cool. And then so that that person I won't name, you know, obviously, um, but uh, your uncle Trip. that shaped that shaped my idea of as a young man of what I thought, you know, a grower was. And I always wanted to be a grower from that point on. Like. We'd be out in the, he lived out in the woods. So we would go out in the woods and we would get there off the bus on Friday 
and he'd be leaving with his truck about an hour after we got to the house and we he'd go into town and he'd get drunk and chase women and do that all weekend long and we just stayed out at the place and watched you know the shit and uh so i got to learn a lot i got to try a lot uh it was awesome uh and yeah that's kind of what started my uh journey back then and you have a uh, you have a pretty like refined weed palette. Like you obviously, you know, you, you go to my tasting society, I guess it's a shameless plug, but you were one of the first people and you were always there talking about, oh, this tastes like this and this tastes like that. And it was just obvious. I, every time I've ever met you, you really appreciate your weed. I guess where I'm going with that is, um, I don't know, have you always had a chance to have good weed? Is that because you said you, you kind of grew up with it? Did you always have a a surrounding of really good ganja or did that kind of become part of your culture too where you guys got better and better weed over time um i would say that uh i had pretty consistent weed until i moved to like eastern oregon central eastern oregon uh things were really super conservative nobody there weren't like a lot of growers and shit so i'd have to go all the way to portland to score quantity um but uh, yeah, so when I, <laughs> that, that was like a year and a half that I lived there. And so uh, that was the only time that I really was not around killer green bud. Uh, like I said, for our town, if you didn't have killer green bud, then people didn't want it. KGB. Have you ever seen freeze dried bud? If we're talking about green bud, Tanasi, I don't know if he's still been doing it, but he was freeze drying his bud and he had some sweet tea when I met him in, in uh, at the Indo Expo. Maybe now he's got 15 other strains too, but I smoked his sweet tea that was freeze dried and it was so killer and cool. He could talk about it. It was like weed marshmallows or something. I was Super actually green, unbelievably flavorful. Go for it, dude. No, Tanasi's onto that next shit, dude. I don't know if y'all ever like had astronaut ice cream with your right. kids. But I yeah, loved it. Now yeah. He's making fucking infused astronaut ice cream and it's incredible. It's a privilege, yeah. seriously. That's genius. That's kind of cool. That's like I had that uh, thought of like uh, cannabis cotton candy. Dude, I'm telling you, if you went to uh, any event like we used to have and you had a booth selling that shit, dude, for, you'd be walking with six figures by the end of the event. Yeah, I was uh, holding back the secret. I wasn't going to tell nobody, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> Friggin key. No, I've been holding key. on to it for some months. That's genius, bro. Are you serious? I feel terrible now. <laughs> nah, I don't feel so terrible. Envy fucking posted it the other day on his page. I saw your shit the yeah, other day. Envy Nobody watches to, this. Envy got to it before. Oh, yeah, right, well, you're good. Me. You're good. Don't make him make oh, it feel too dude. bad. Oh, good, ah. man. Just, dude, I was dying it's holding that secret room, like. bro. Oh. So how is it? <laughs> it's delicious. Uh, I had some. It? It's amazing, oh, dude. It's incredible. For the potency, really though, good. I meant to high, high, high milligram edibles, the same as Puck and Pedro. Pedro's probably way more than me with RSO. So instead of eating a handful of fucking cookies or a big-ass fucking candy bar to get your 1,000 milligrams, you can literally eat a fucking couple of large pieces of this and the 150 milligrams of this compared to the dispensaries i get knocked the fuck out so much mm -hmm. harder on this than mm -hmm. i do any fucking dispensary candy bar i've ever fucking ate i'd love to try it dude love dude it. it's 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 good it's really good and i <laughs> i completely agree with tanazi i have like i'll take like he gave me a, a very generous of him gifted me a bag um, I'll take like a couple pieces that are like this big out. Uh, it tastes amazing, and then yeah, man, you you feel it. It's it's. it's I feel like it's some. I'm like I'm not eating this and going out in town either. It's like something I eat that fucking knocks me out. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. I know we challenge all fucking accepted, man. Like, sometimes you've got you've got cannabis edibles that are just so tasty that you just you really want to fucking eat them just because they taste good. And you that's what munchies. that's what these are <laughs> yeah and like it's a real struggle yeah. man because you know if you, you just can really do some down damage. on it you're really gonna just, fuck yourself up you keep going it just tastes so good that's interesting I'm, I'm down to try it dude i think i think the i think decarbing is that was, my, that was my trick with this so i, I made it's... the rosin mm -hmm. decarbed it for 45 minutes and it's full spectrum so it's actually 25 through 
120 micron. Oh, nice. Good for you. Good for you. But yeah, I think I think the decarb game is something crazy. Um, I mean, like like you were saying, I mean, I took 2,000 milligrams of, of RSO before the show earlier. I mean, it's not the same, me, right? It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be an onion. And I was actually, Dizzy's over here. I was talking to her about this earlier today. I mean, this can be a whole goddamn show, but we were talking about, I asked her, just today she made RSO from rosin pucks, right? So that's hash that's been pressed at like 170 degrees for two and a half minutes. And then when she makes it, she said, I think the alcohol was, well, how hot was the alcohol today? It was 170. So 170 degrees for 20 minutes or something. So that's not going to be a decarb, no. you know? Uh, but when we take it and we've had other people, I mean, it'll make you fucking drool, you know, I mean, it punches you in the face, <laughs> you know, um, I'll bring some up and you can, you can try this and cause I'll be up there in a couple of weeks or in a week and a half. And you can, I'd, I'd love for you to just take like a thousand milligrams, a couple thousand milligrams. I've had, uh, Dan's tried a couple thousand milligrams. Of course, Dan's a monster supposedly with edibles, you know, <laughs> yo, all right. So this ice cream makes me sleepy nice so nice. we finally found something that will actually knock on my door now there you go so there yeah go. it's i'll take it like um like dave said i'll take a couple big chunks probably like about that big and i after three of them and about a half hour i'm like all right i'm i think i'm ready for bed and i will say man that we made we made cookies or some i don't remember what the hell it was one time but we added like a gram and a half of rosin to the batter, you know, and I ate a piece and I was like, damn, I'm fucking high as shit. So I, I'm wondering if there isn't really something to using hash and, and using D or not, excuse me, using rosin, but using decarbed rosin, but using high quality decarbed rosin. You know, I think, I think you're onto something for sure. Like, you know, the, the, the RSO is definitely medicinally, medicinally beneficial. But if you want something that's just going to fuck your face up. You right. Because what, what are they doing with the edibles at the dispensary? That's just distillate, right? With the like More a than thousand milligram edible. That's, a, that's like distillate. More than I'm likely. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's not decarbed, right? No. Well, Guys, it, it depends on what you're purchasing. I mean, if you're just purchasing yeah. a layman's fucking gummies that are 10 milligrams, then yeah, they're just using distillate, you know. But some people are actually are actually infusing hash hash and hash rosin and stuff into their into their edibles more and more and i i think it's because people just tried it once and were like damn what the fuck you know all of a sudden i got uh, really really high and share a little piece on that um are you familiar with charas or han mm -hmm. yeah 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 han gum or han hash whatever you call it so you have ganja oil and then hash oil differently. So the same charas, when you take the charas and do the same RSO kind of method, you get a much more potent effect than when you just make regular RSO to plant matter. So that's why I'm just kind of hearing what you're saying about the live rosin and, you know, just kind of work with it mm -hmm, from the mm -hmm. bushman to the lab man, you know, mm -hmm. and see the parallel. So I can definitely see it definitely. So, Ganja oil itself, or what we call hash oil, is different from ganja oil. So the ganja oil would be what I would say you call a typical RSO or raw black oil, just to make it universal, I guess. You know? And then the hash oil now is made from the charas or the finger gum or something like that. That's, and that's when you find super potent. Like, you know, deep carb like or no? Yeah, man. So in the deep carb, I find that you definitely like, I tell you, even two rice grain good enough for me like, wow. yeah. you know, it is strong i'm not saying you can't do more but to keep functional mm -hmm. and keep doing what you have to do in a two rice grain is quite adequate for me. it took me a while to get my rso dialed in uh pedro thank you guys and thank you to all of you guys for the love appreciate the love um but with the rso for me um i kind of started mixing it with hemp seed oil so that i could get some of the nutritional benefits of the hemp seed oil and I can maybe dial it in a little bit more so like I can do like two capsules and then get the effect that I need. Um, I've also started doing a morning dose. So I do a larger dose at night before bed. Like I took mine 
like about two hour, about an hour and a half ago. So I'm really feeling it for sure. Um, Are you decarbonate? Yeah, yeah, all the material is decarb before it goes into the uh, extract craft. And then we take that hash and mix it with the hemp seed oil. And then that's what I use for RSO. If, for still, anybody who doesn't know, what, uh, what does decarb mean? It means you've taken the THCA uh, molecule and turn it into a THC, you've dropped the A. And so the THC molecule is uh, in the cannabis itself that's been converted so that when you do your extract, uh, that, that uh, decarbed material is getting into your edibles or hash or butter or coconut oil, whatever you do. All right, so it makes the THC bioavailable. How do you do that? Uh, just put it on a tray and put it in the oven. I think that it's 225, I think is what we do it at. 225 for, Fahrenheit? Yeah, for about, God, I think we do it for about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. And that'll activate it. And then you put that weed in your edibles and it'll get you way more fucked up. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, a actually, we're like I said, we're doing an extraction and then taking that and mixing it with hemp seed oil. Uh, but you can uh, decarb your material the same way if you're going to do a butter infusion or if you're going to do like a coconut oil infusion, you would still decarb the same way. But yeah, back to the RSO, I really want to put it out there that uh, I think everyone would benefit from RSO. I think you should try to dial in your dose. Uh, if you're a person who suffers with any kind of chronic pain or any kind of joint and muscle uh, nerve, any of that, uh, you're going to find a lot of benefit in eating RSO, uh, especially before you go to bed. Because sometimes for people who are suffering, the nights are the worst. I mean, if you can't, when you're so hurt and so bad, you can't sleep. Uh, it's it's the fucked up mind space to be. So being able to dose yourself with a good dose of RSO at night, it really helps knock you the fuck out. And um, yeah, you, you I think all everybody should dial in their dose and be using an RSO orally every day. And um, it can I know even, that it can even help ahead, people Pedro. if it can even it can even help people if they're constipated. I tell you what. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, a thousand milligrams. You will shit yourself and clean out your intestines. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Every time I take a thousand and a cup of coffee, <laughs> or you do, you take your coconut oil, thousand milligram coconut oil. You stir that in your coffee, and then you, and that's that'll clean you out right there. I'll tell you what. So that's the Dave's liquid plumber. Bingo. Gotcha. You're welcome. Also, I mean, could just be, also eat food. Can be you can also use it as a colonic. Okay. Cheers, everybody. So make sure the coffee's not hot. Well, or do you drink it? <laughs> just, just, just mildly warm. <laughs> I like, I like one fifteen. <laughs> Any cream or sugar? Okay. <laughs> Just oh, cream, sugar going. kills. <laughs> uh, I don't think I could do that. I don't. I don't think I could do that. I got. Jared, what are you uh, growing this summer, or this uh, summer, fall, whatever? You're always growing interesting stuff, and I know you're growing some uh, cool new phenos and stuff. So, what are you working on? Uh, we've got a project uh, in the greenhouse. Uh, we did five auto flowers, uh, two of a blueberry auto and a Northern Lights auto, which I laugh when I say this. Um, not one of them looked the same. Two of them smell similar. The blueberries do smell blueberryish. You can definitely get that DJ short in there. Um, but the structure on them are, it's just, re it's awful. And they're like, uh, about maybe three and a half feet tall um, it's just yeah autoflowers are definitely something you'd want to like plant an acre of and then do uh, extractions with it 
I don't, well, tell us, I tell us more, JR, because that's always kind of the, one of the questions in the chat. So it's, it's super, super tempting to grow femmes. And, you know, femmes, obviously, you don't have to select for the males. And then, of course, people think, well, you know, it, it, I can get that much. What if I don't even have to worry about the time or the cycle or anything, if I can just set it and forget it? And they, they hope that it's going to be just as good, right? So what do you mean by the structure's not as good? What do you mean by that kind of stuff? Well, the root you've been, I mean, you've been that, growing forever. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt you. The, the ruderalis that's in there makes it kind of an airy structure. Um, some of them look like what I would say a marijuana. I hate to say it's not marijuana. Ruderalis is not marijuana. It is. But um, when I look at some of the autoflowers, they actually look like they would be, um, you know, a good producing plant. And then the other ones, the structure is just way leafy, super. I mean, the bottle look like it's this big but you put your hand around it and it's just pure air. Uh, so there's a lot of surface area. And then like in, within those blueberry autos, um, I think if someone did extractions with those, it would be a good thing. And like I said, I think if you had like an acre where you could do a whole bunch of those and just be done. I mean, the appeal for us was that when the rains come in the, uh, when that wall of moisture comes in from the dew point or whatever that is, marine layer, we have a marine layer that comes in like a wall and hits the greenhouse. And then we start getting uh, botrytis, bud rot. And so uh, a lot of times you end up taking your shit early. Uh, and so the appeal of the autoflower was, hey man, we're gonna be done by mid August, no problem. It's gonna be great. Um, but like I said, they were all, in, they were very inconsistent in structure. Only two of them actually had a decent smell. And in my opinion, autoflowers are uh, something that need to be refined. And uh, I think it's hard to find really good autoflowers out there. I try to push, yeah, I agree with that. I try to push like people away from doing big acreage of autoflowers because it's, it's, it's not, it, it's never what, what, the expectation is in it the inconsistency um you know you'll have it, they don't flower all at the same time they don't mature at the same time it's it's uh so that's the flowers. cartels man another good one is a lot of them don't even grow that well outdoors Agreed. Like a yeah, lot of I mean, people are growing them outdoors to like avoid the late season, early season kind of thing, but they don't even grow well outdoors. So why is that? I, do you know? I see I Bob over there shaking people. his head. Well, I mean, I mean, they they supposedly evolved outdoors in well, Siberia or whatever, games, depending on what what theory it is. To avoid, or you just want like just generally, my opinion. It's but anyway, it's any names that's out there. No, I mean, with a big scale. I mean. You're talking 2,000, maybe 3,000, you know? And I can tell you, maybe I, if I search good, I might can find five keepers. So, yeah, I'm just saying, inconsistent. The you can't keep them because they're out of flyers. They're dead already. Yeah, there's no keepers. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> low rider it just got prettier, you understand? That's all it did. I have oh, actually yeah. seen what I thought looked like it would be good from an auto flower, you know, through people's pictures and stuff like that. But I, it, it, it's not very often that I see that. It's not I, very often I, that I see that. I think auto flowers, autos uh, have their place. Um, and it's, it's definitely in like the hobbyist, um, uh, small kind of like gorilla grow style stuff where, you know, maybe you don't have everything that you need to completely manipulate your light cycle or whatever the situation is. If someone is growing in a pot on their balcony in an apartment That's complex, that is. might be more appropriate for them. I mean, th that definitely has its place. And I don't knock autos at all for that. It's just for, for the applications that I'm typically, you know, working on large acreage, it just, it doesn't work. It just never where greenhouse is even, you know. If, I wouldn't, if, I wouldn't if, even if say go as far as large it, acreage, like just that. don't leave the balcony. Anything over the balcony, you know, forget <laughs> it. They have some genetics, they call fast genetics. I would say work with those. They probably suit you a lot better if you're trying to really beat the clock. 
Um, not just, you know, after big up Rasta Jeff again, but something like the Orange Gazim or, you know, anything that's pretty, that moves pretty fast. If you even start late, you won't be disappointed because it kind of makes up for itself. So, yeah, it might be a short, oh, um, man. Be a short thick, you know, for the plan. You understand? It will still do its cycle within the short amount of time. The other flowers look like they, they skip some stages, you know. So mm. they hurry up and get ripe, but they forgot to smell or they forgot to carry any THC or potency with them or, you know, something is like they, 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 they hit and miss. And as I said, the overall <clears throat> package in terms of keeper rate or something you'd want to repeat. And I guess repeatability is what it's all about. So even for that, Rasta Jeff, which strain, just as a general breeder, I always ask us breeder, which strain do you know that you cannot do without? that you always have to repeat. And you should have a couple of them in your head that you just know that, yo. They're like my kids. I can't decide. Orange gasm. We got to keep the orange gasm around. If we got to pick one and say orange gasm, can't go without her. Uh, why I'm saying that now, a lot of this depends on demand. You might particularly don't like it or you might don't have a problem putting it to rest. Say you have a maybe 50 seeds or 100 seeds and you park it and now you can revive it eventually. Or a lot of breeders put, out, put down their breeding pair. So if you found this in a F1, you put down the two, the male and the female, and you put down that and say, okay, when I'm ready to do this breeding again, I try to do the cross again and come up with something close. But because of demand, sometimes you just have to keep something in stock. And it, apparently orange gasm is doing well. So whether you decided or not, it had to do, you know, it had to be there. I, I would really like personally, the star dog, I mean, uh, personally, was really... You know, it's been part of probably my favorite so far. Easy to grow and you really get what you want. You know, there's no disappointment. Even in the difference of phenotypes, it is not a lot of difference and not a major variations. But when they do come, it's pleasant. But you're not disappointed with the overall package. And the one, the, the platinum tangent one that you did to the rise, which one was that again? Sunkiss. Yeah, that one was all right. Yeah, know? she's so a winner. Have some of them that I would say, honestly, you know, you just have to keep them. You know, if you have the demand that high, people can hire. Right, even as a grower or somebody that's putting out a product or a dispenser. That's it. I'm, I'm speaking now to the, the person that's closest to the consumer. Once you're having a business, it's based off repeatability. If you are just really basing your business off new customers, I'm not really sure how far you got to go. And the breeding game is a lot like that. I'm really glad to hear Rasta Jeff said he got something good out of what was it? Green Gate Genetics. I heard him dig it up on one of his podcasts. Apparently, one of his parenting line came from it. But yeah. I ran to like all of it, the, and they're super expensive. They're like, I mean, that is always something that kind of maybe hurts me when I invest so much. And really, when there's nothing keepers, and you're talking maybe, what's that, $500 for a 20 pack? And then, you know, you get like, say, 12, 20 packs, 15, 20 bucks, and then you find nothing that you really want to keep. Come on now, it's kind of disappointing. So, you know, I'm really happy when Rasta Jeff said he actually found something and was able to, whether bring it forward, but whichever way, bring it to a level where at least the genetics is not faded. You know, but as I'm saying, when you're close to the consumer, you need that repeatability. So a lot of time, that's just what drives business. So, so Bob, just... when, when you're in the field and you have like your little 10 by 10 patch that you do your breeding with, um, how do you make sure you get repeatability so that you have something the same that you know you had and that you really like and does well? All right, let's put it this way. If I was to describe the medicinal field and then the recreational or the, we would say we have a vintage culture. So when you talk about bog seed, the repeatability is really based off the breeding that takes place in that geographic region. So we have different microclimates and different pockets around Jamaica that you will find a predominant breed of one specific type. But it's usually done, it always changes. So that's why we say vintage. It's like you see it today and you don't see it tomorrow. So even when we dispense our herb, a lot of our time it's on the stick. So we hang the tree and we cut the, so the whole stick is what's actually passed on. Because a lot of time when you get four or five sticks, they all might be different. So if you really like something that you smoke, you're fine about the stick. Now, when you cut everything off of the stick and put it into a jar, all the different buds are mixed up. 
So when I would say medicinal, medicinal more leans to the consistency. So if you take um, what's a popular drug uh, or a popular um, mild Advil. Yeah, there you go. So if whether you're in LA or whether you're in New York or in Miami, if you have a headache, you'd go to that because you know of the consistency. So it's the same thing. If you have an orange gasm, whether you're in Denver or whether you're in Jamaica, or whether that relief or that response that you get from this substance, you're expecting it to be the same. So you'd be more likely to draw for it. So in terms of a medicinal feel, you would want that consistency in terms of what, but I would say for maybe the more vintage or the traditional person that frequency. Yeah, OG gets me high, the chem dog gets me high. So it's not something like I have to have orange gasm right to, if I don't have orange gasm, I'm going to stop smoking. You know, so the variety takes in. So I, that's why I said the demand kind of demands it. So if the crowd demands something consistently right through, then the breeders and the growers are forced to produce it. But what you find within the recreational market, Blue Dream is hot and then the strawberries come in. So even on my basic trip to Michigan the other day, it's like it's all about desserts. Desserts were all in. It's like sherbet, this and punching purple, this and Sunday scoops and milkshakes and cookies, you know, all kind of. So you see that the flavors and stuff, you know, is kind of in. So a lot of time, the kind of go thing, you had a whole gas line, everybody's into the gas, and then you have the diesel and the octane, and, you know, so it was different levels of gas. And then you'll have the crowd that will just predominantly stick with it. But demand is what will always drive what you kind of have to do, you know. And then you have your keepers. You have something that we know that me, like, you know, the lamb's bread are certain things that are very, like a skunk line. When you find a good skunk line, I'm a, a 90s person. So that would what I would describe as the high school high. You know, when you first start getting high, whatever herb it was that you associate with it, whatever smell, whatever complexity in pull or taste profile, what you associate with it. So you might want to keep one of these around. So for me, I find that to be the skunk line. If I find a good skunk, I always try to keep that. Just But that is more of a personal thing because maybe nobody traditionally wants it right now. You know, so... So do you feel like a lot of the hype strains and hype genetics have changed the way you guys grow there? Most definitely, most definitely. Um, the most famous place in Jamaica, we call it Orange Hill. So it's pretty famous. It's on the western side of Jamaica. And the environment is very good for producing high THC. As we have learned through different lighting course, that spectrum of light that the sun produced, that produced, you know, it, the western side of Jamaica gets that point for the longest period. So you have certain genetics that do really well on that side. And then it was an you know, old hippie community that kind of a lot of the tourists that came in that stayed there kind of moved to the hills. So they kind of adapted that lifestyle. And it was so that, but what you find now is that they have been forced to keep that tradition of having all the good stuff up. So if Blue Dream is in, they're going to have it. If Cookie is in, they're going to have it. If Wedding Cake is in, they're always going to have it. And then when a traditional farmer in Jamaica would like to go get some seeds, where do you go? You go the best from West, you go to Orange Hill. So that is how it gets polluted. So it's community like the indigenous communities that do not like those hybrid or polybred genetics that traditionally say, no, we don't want Kush, we don't want this. This is just what we smoke. So they have a traditional leverage that they, they keep within this. So if it wasn't really for them, I want to give thanks. Those certain elements would have maybe totally been bred out completely. And that's like answered up the question, you know? Ha, cheers to that, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, that silence breaker. Well, we can keep talking all night, you know. Just a very talkative one, you know. Yeah, kind of why we keep you around. Yeah, well, after the good for something, I guess. Show Hell up yeah. at Nasi's house, all the flour goes empty, then I have to start the dabs, you know. So, kind of clear out all the flour at everybody's house, you know. Hell yeah. Oh, what were you puffing Just on to today? share a little Rasta Bob story. Or what was the, the best thing you puffed on today? Oh, God. Well, 
I'm a variety smoker, one thing with me. So even in my chalice right now, I have a little bit of wedding cake. And they have um, what they call like a sherbet, a lamb sherbet. So it's like the sherbet they put with the lamb's bread. So it's kind of nice. So I just blend the two of them and keep smoking, you know. And I mean, how is it? This is the, it's kind of funny to hear, you know, a Jamaican guy smoking, you know, desserty strains. How is it? Do you enjoy it? Yeah, man, it's not bad. Uh, maybe I'm not built to be married. The wedding cake is not my favorite, but you know, the other cakes are all right, but it's kind of heavy, it's kind of a sedative vibes you know mm. so that's why i kind of like it with the the sherbet lamb's bread it's kind of nice the sherbet lamb's bread is a little more flavorful things like that do you stick to that do you kind of like the more uplifting weed the kind of more i don't know tropical weed yeah man more functional just an hour i speak more to effect a little flavor is nice flavor in terms of like coffee like anything coffee or chocolate that's really a preference earthy kind of tones i really like that overall but effect is what I really go for on a whole. So once it's palatable, I don't have a problem. I like diversity, but effect. Some of these herbs get you really relaxed, you know, and they really talk to you. Bob, you're working so hard, you know, put up your feet and relax. Um, somebody can do that for you. Just kick back. You know? I don't like those kind of herbs, you know. I like something that helps me to focus in and get the mission done. So I find more of an enhancer than anything else, you know. That's a common complaint, I think, of people who kind of uh, dabble with weed and then they're like, oh, I don't really like it because either their brain gets too racy or they get really scared of stuff, you know, they get paranoid. Or on the other side, they get way too stoned and basically think, oh, I'm going to smoke a couple bowls and play video games and uh, it's the next morning, you know, you know, they just wake up from that. And that's not cool either, right? It's like, how do you even approach that to somebody that's so new? I mean, we probably have new people in chat right now. Okay, especially if you like the smoke. I, I personally, I, get, I just like to smoke. So strains like that. So when I have to load on the one, I want to take one jar. I don't want to smoke anymore. It's like I feel full, you know? So, but with me, you know, being a traditional person, I think within I and I, it makes it more functional. So meaning if I take a hit and I think it's going to make me not do it, I only take one. But if I pull it and the effect is all right, then I take more than one, but sometimes you take one hit and you go and do what you have to do and you get it done. So when people say that pot makes you lazy and pot makes you this, well, maybe if you're a lazy person, it might enhance and really help your laziness and enhance your final qualities in meditation and couch locked activities. However, I think if you're traditionally somebody that likes to get done, it will also help you to enhance and focus in to, you know, get it done, get it done effectively and get back to smoking, I guess, you know. Also. Yeah, I started out smoking uh, recreationally, uh, and then I had my accident, and then so I started using cannabis medicinally, and um, I think having access to it, like I said, and having people in the community help me out when I needed that, uh, was really a good thing. That was probably, uh, how do I put it? One of the things that kept you going during that time was seeing all the love you got from the community. Because I'm sure that's probably a really down time for you. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of going through it right now because I, I herniated my stoma, and your stoma is this part of your intestines that kind of stick out your stomach. And so they're kind of rushing me to go back to surgery to get reattachment done. And, you know, with things the way they are, I'm really kind of apprehensive about it, but I'm kind of being forced into it. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I can't really uh, change that, but yeah, it's kind of a weird headspace to be in. I, I feel like once I get reattachment, though, and it's I can just look at it as something that, well, that was part of my past. You know, I can just move on and not have to, like, deal with it, you know. And so all my blood work is still good. All of my um, CT scans are good. I'm tumor-free. So um, I, I try to look at the positive things, you know. Um so I just want to try, try to get through this next little uh, bit of fuckery. Well, in, in the embracing the organics, I'm going to 
chime in a bit, you know, within the wellness and the Rastafari community. Ganja is a herb. It's just another thing like a tomato. So why you mean I can only plant five tomato trees in my yard? It kind of is not logical. However, in understanding embracing organics, I don't know how you grow, but in simple terminologies, to get a quality organic structure, which why we are after, let's say a water only is the highest peak. So to get to a water only stage, you really need a high level of biological activity for deliveries and then a good high level of nutrient availability. So within yourself, it's the same thing. So when you're using the RSO and it's really helping you, so it's like you're putting in the enzymes and so forth, but now you need the microbial activity and the electrical conductivity within your body to not rebuild itself now, that way you can regenerate within yourself. So it's not even at a, it's more of a prevention. So just like how we say, we get your plants healthy and they are more resistant, so a bug will come by and want to bite and it cannot chew on it because you know it picks on a weaker plant. That's nature, they pick on the weakest thing. So even with the virus going around now, the stronger you are, the more resistant, the more likely you are to I guess, be somebody that can pass it on, asymptomatic, or maybe be somebody that doesn't get it any at all whatsoever. So it's the same thing, somebody in recovery, we always recommend that, you know, you know, we are changing of diet, exercise, they always tell you, but think about it logically. The exercise is just a way to oxygenate your body. So it's just putting oxygen to as many parts in your body, whichever way you can. So if you do yoga, if you swim, if you bike, it doesn't really matter. Oxygen, get some oxygen going to as many places as possible. And then it will be, you know, and then the microbial activity. You now, I don't know if you do KNF or anything like that, not saying to drink some IMO, but things like that, probiotics, you know, it will really help to stimulate and the electrical food now will really help the consumption of the ganja enzymes with your food, you know. So don't be afraid to put it within your diet and everything you eat. When your salad, your drizzle, a light version of your coconut oil with the RSO on it. So it becomes a part so they can now work on a diverse scale level while it's breaking down. You understand? So you find that the overall health and wellness will become more efficient within your body system. I mean, Bobby, yeah, you I think that. I, go ahead, go ahead Fumador. I was just going to say, hopefully I can be brief. I was going to say, it's interesting when you bring up oxygenation and everything else, it's interesting how often that comes up. Maybe one of these days we should de dedicate like a whole show and get someone who knows about it because like we brought up that dude, Wim Hof or whatever, he's got the breathing mechanism or method that, that uh, oxygenates your blood and everything. And I was just thinking as you were kind of talking, I was like, all right, you know, I've often said about worms, they oxygenate the soil and you want kind of the, I guess I, I wanted to say that the, the difference between beneficial and uh, pathogenic microbes is whether they really kind of create soil structure that oxygenates the root, the roots. So just it was interesting to think how much oxygen is this life giving force. And I don't know, just it's a very important thing. Maybe we should really delve into it more and not just kind of we always brush over it because none of us are freaking I don't know, chemists or whatever the fuck. Right. So but in the meantime, it's something we should know a lot more about anyway. Sorry, Jared. Yeah, I I am. Uh... I started doing a little bit more exercising and changed the way I eat. Um, I do a whole 30 program and that allows you to eat meat, vegetables, fruit, seeds, nuts, and eggs. And that's basically it. Uh, but the, it, within that is a lot. There's a lot that you can focus on. I eat a lot of protein salads. Um, I eat a lot of street tacos. Uh, stuff like that that's, uh, you know, gluten-free and that kind of stuff, um, I think has also helped me get my uh, immunity up and make my body strong. So, and I can honestly say in the year and a half that I've been eating RSO, I have not been sick for more than a day. Uh, when I came back from Colorado after the Indo Expo and everybody fucking almost died from whatever the fuck we got there, um, I had it that day. I got it that day. I felt the symptoms. The next day I was kind of feeling better by the third day it was gone. I didn't get sick at all. And I talked to like guys that like you, Tanaz, you were sick for like fucking Bro. a month straight. 
two weeks, bro. Two weeks of just death. Like, yeah. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I had a respiratory and like shit going down for it. It lasted four weeks, man. I couldn't, I didn't smoke for almost 30 days, dude. That first dab to me, when I first got a good one in me, dude, I understood what psychedelic weed was, dude. It, again i was like whoa bro this is almost unfunctional like i'm i'm trippy that's how i feel right now <laughs> that's awesome Hell yeah dude i didn't get sick dude, at all actually, from dude, the expo either i was just gonna say that it's you know the the human condition is a fairly frail one do you have recommendation for somebody who kind of struck like Maybe they get terrible news. I mean, here you are kind of on the tail end. I mean, it's not even the first time that you've rushed past that. I mean, like, like you're one of these guys that focuses on positivity. But let's say somebody in the chat or somebody that watches this video or whatever gets struck with a fucking whip one of these days. How do they deal with that? Because, I mean, again, you've, you've kind of come off the other side of that. What do you do? You just take it each day. You do what you got to do. And you look for the light at the end of the tunnel. And you strive for the light, you stay in the light, and uh, you hope that, you know, you, you make it. I mean, yeah, uh, I've had like over 24 surgical procedures in my life with my reconstruction of my ankle that didn't work out, and then my amputation, and then um, having the cancer thing. So, um, you know, when you go into those situations, there's always an element of fear that kind of goes with it. But I've learned over the years that you just got to surrender, man. You just got to surrender yourself and, and, and be, be good within. And just like I said, get up that day, do what you got to do to get through and uh, keep, keep pushing, man. Because our time here on planet Earth is pretty damn short, you know, that we're, that we're conscious of. And um, I think that just being here and being with the people that I love uh, is, is a tremendous gift. And what's beyond this, I don't know, but I know that right now here on planet earth, uh, things uh, are good for me. You know, I, I have a, I have a good family. I have a good life. And um, like I said, I think gratitude for what you have helps you get through those dark times when you got to try to just kind of plow through it. I don't know if that answers the question, but it's, it's kind of, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. Um, one of our fellow cannabuzzers, she just recently had an amputation and uh, she's dealing with a lot of, um, a lot of phantom pain. And so I've been reaching out to her, trying to encourage her to start doing RSO um, because it quiets the nerves and it helps a lot. And so, um, yeah, I just, I think giving, you know, putting yourself out there and giving as much as you can uh, is going to help you get through some of those darker times. Because lots of human condition. I mean, that's the human experience. We all have, have moments in our lives that are tragic. And it's just how you push forward and how you approach it kind of determines how, how it's going to affect you. Sorry, rambling. <laughs> what we asked for. It's all good, yeah, man. Exactly it's actually yeah. getting to be that time, boys. Bread and say likes, like you said, man. That's that's how I'm living. It's just spice, you know. And I'm a good smoking partners. He says they have two lungs and he's not trying to go home with any of them. So <laughs> likes is okay. But he was just so try some of that wedding cake. What's going to knock him out more? The wedding cake or what was the other one? The the bloofy floofy desserty vanilla cake something frosting. Uh, he likes the, the wedding cake more, more punch, the hard knock like that OG and you know stuff like that. Him like the punch Ooh. in there, but swell up your face, make you feel like you're kind of numb. Right. I still have some arise, so maybe in like 10, 10, 12 weeks, you know, we we'll see what happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, but as I said, Junior, definitely, you know, that is, you know, your positivity, the outlook on life. Yeah, man, it was an excellent speech. The top speech of the night, that. 
Yeah, man. So, you know, keep it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Meditation there, you can't wrong, you know? This is the thing there. You have to be a part of life, you know? To really enjoy to the fullest, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. people live half a life and, you know, they don't really know if they say life is to just live your full potential like on a talk about herb. So when you bring herb on the full potential, as a life, to don't have to just try to the full potential to see me like when you bring the herb. See me. Nothing different. We're not different from the plant or nothing else. Everything are just life. All of it combined together. We're not separate from nothing when we name life. So we have to just try to just combine ourselves. No matter how people stay, we have to just look beyond that and just know say our life same. And just go through, you know, and do what we can do. Anyway, I'm going to and I give thanks for the moment, you know. Blessed love. There we go. All right. Yeah, man. So I guess I'm going to have to put the, the kibosh on the fun tonight because it's getting to be that time. Mm. You're no fun. fun. Yeah, I no know. Fun, Dan. I, I got. Somebody's got to stop the train, right? Five Crusher. There's no brakes. <laughs> <laughs> but yet again, I got to thank you JR are? for coming and hanging out with us. It was awesome having you here. And like with all the guests, JR, you're welcome to come back whenever you want. Whenever you need to come and hang out with some homies, you are welcome to come back and, and chill Whatever he us. needs to. Come on, whenever he wants to. Jesus, it's not yeah. a need-to-know basis. Fuck, he's welcome anytime. Thank you. I you appreciate that, that on, right? brother. Yeah, I appreciate that, Fumador. I'm going to see you soon, buddy. Mm-hmm. We live way too close to each other not to be seeing each other. That's at least right. six feet apart. Right. Like, you're, wel- you're welcome to come hang out in my driveway anytime, bro. I'll, I'll stay right eight, on, eight appreciate feet apart. That, dude. Uh, pretty soon here, I'm going to have some very interesting flavors. I think it'll be very interesting puffing time. So, yeah, let's let's uh, let's hook it, up one of these days. Hell yeah. I'm down. I'm always down. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, and thanks for having me on tonight, guys. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about cannabis. Um, I hope that people get out there, download it, upload it, and have a good time, man. That's what it's about. It's about us having a good time. I want to see all my bros there, man. I miss y'all. Hell Thank yeah. You, man. Nice to officially meet you on this first show. I haven't met you before, so it's been great. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you too, man. All right, so same with you, Bob. Same with you, Bob. All right, guys. So find something you love, go pursue it, and hopefully that's growing cannabis and being organic. So until the next one, peace out, one love. We will catch y'all next week. <laughs>